Hey guys, welcome to Sketchbook Pro tutorial number three. My name is Carlos Mendoza and today we're going to be exploring weapons. Uh, let's get started. Today we're going to start with some warm-ups. Uh, typically I don't start with this kind of stuff when I'm doing tutorials, but it's important for you guys to know that uh, doing warm-ups are important, especially when you start filling up a bunch of pages of stuff. So even though this might seem a little simple, it's very uh, useful in techniques. It's a useful technique to use uh, when you're doing concept stuff because it is muscle memory. And I do want to encourage you guys at this time to do draw a lot and uh, spend some time on your sketchbooks just kind of researching things, studying stuff, and uh, really putting in uh, some great references, some mental references in your mind. Oops. Uh, men mental messages in your mind. And that way you guys can explore those when you're doing new techniques and uh, new design. So at this, at this point, let's get started. <clears throat> we're going to use the mirror tool. We've been using this tool from the beginning of our of these tutorials. So uh, from here, we're going to be doing these kind of gesture lines. All right. So uh, let's start doing something with a little bit of a theme. So when I draw, I like to do things with themes. So here we're going to do a couple of vampire style weapons. So what would a, what would a vampire use if he had a sword, right? So let's let's explore a bunch of possibilities that we can use. Uh, that can give us that kind of uh, uh, that kind of idea. Uh, here, I like to explore things with uh, with shapes, right? So uh, the shapes that I'm using here are triangular. Um, a lot of stuff that looks very like flames or like fire, uh, like torch. Uh, so here, I'm going to use the base, almost like the Statue of Liberty torch, at the base of it, just because it looks a lot more elegant, you know. So uh, I know that uh, from referencing vampires, a lot of the stuff that uh, vampires have is very elegant, uh, very ornate. And so here I want to use that kind of mentality when I'm drawing this. So I'm going to use um, those kind of shapes uh, to, to tell my story on these swords. Uh, remember, everything that you draw ha should have a story and a purpose for why you're doing what you're doing or why it's there. So here, here's just the first sample of one of them. So I'm going to add some ornate de details inside of it just to kind of keep that, uh, that ornate feel for it. So uh, then I'll add some grooves and cuts. I'll remove my mirror tool so that I can add all the, the, the non-symmetrical details into the, into the sword here. When I do need something in symmetry, I will bring it back and I will add it again. So let's start another one. For this one, let's go a little bit more literal, right? So here we're going to do a little bit more of like an actual vampire or bat-like uh, sword. So again, keeping with the ornate theme, uh, let's start doing something a little bit more <clears throat> uh, like a traditional blade. But we want to do something where it has a little bit more of a vampire feel. So yeah, let's let's do that here and add some wings here. For this, it's a little literal. I'm not a big fan of it, to be honest, because it's kind of been done to death. So I'm just exploring at this point. Even when you start doing some explorations, you want to make sure that uh, the details that you're adding, uh, even though you, you, you're you doing this through muscle memory or you're just drawing it just out of first-time exploration, it's fine. But again, try to have your own uh, version or your own... Um, your own take on things, especially when you're doing something like this, because there's been so many, I mean, I'm talking about hundreds and thousands of different weapons that have been designed by multiple and crazy talented artists. So you want to have your own version of things. So if this is a bat one, um, I'm definitely going to change it up a little bit because I'm sure people have done uh, swords with wings before. So let's get these, let's get rid of these and make these like axe, like an axe, right? So let's keep these more like, um, like purposeful, like we said earlier, like let's make these like something where he can cut you know, and, and, and have a purpose for the size of it, not just like wings, but there's actually uh, uh, design for that actual weapon. So here um, we're going to add more ornate stuff and uh, something that's a little bit that ties into the, to the, to the narrative here. Um, again, with the vampires, they, 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 the stuff that I've researched, they do have a lot of ornate stuff, a lot of detail. So I'm going to add that to my sword. I want to have details. I want to have these kind of uh, extra little pieces and stuff. Let's erase this, this skull here down at the bottom. And add again more ornate pieces and stuff because again I want to make it elegant looking. I don't want to make it like kind of uh, demon like or anything like that because again this isn't what it. This is not what we're trying to do here. We're trying to keep it uh, elegant and yet keep it uh, some type of vampire like weapon. So um, let's do another one here. <clears throat> here let's try to go broad. I was trying to go a little bit uh, uh, bigger, but I changed my mind on it because again vampires are very. From what I've seen, I've never seen an uh, oversized one, so which would be pretty cool. But uh, they're fairly thin. They're they're in shape and uh, and they they move very quickly. So all these guys' swords should be somewhat like uh, you know thin and and uh, in, in in the blade. And you know I know I'm making one of them a little bit broad, but I'm gonna make this one a little bit thin. I'm gonna use this uh, 
this kind of sun-like shape in the center of it just because i know that some of the vampires carry these like emblems of like the sun or something on their on their chest or necklace so i'm going to use that as inspiration for this one right here <clears throat> and uh and again exploring stuff here again i don't really like to spend a lot of time um like uh detailing stuff i just really want the overall shape and uh and the storytelling that i want to do in photoshop or any of the other programs i will go ahead and explore a little bit further but for this particular one, I want to just really just get the, the nice line art in and uh, the details uh, of what I want to do. This is going to be like my underbase. So when I do go into details like with uh, Photoshop with some color, um, I will uh, have a great, uh, a great foundation here at this point. So I do want to not explore too much here. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry. I do want to explore a lot here, not explore when I'm in Photoshop. So remember that, guys. Don't try to explore everything in your sketches, not during your line art because it, it saves a lot of time. So from here, um, as, after I'm adding my details and stuff, and I am using the mirror, the mirror tool here, I'm going to take the mirror tool off and add all my details and cuts inside of it so that I can make it a little bit more a asymmetrical. Um, and from that, I could just, you know, um, explore some cuts, some new, de new details and stuff that are not necessarily on the opposite side. But when I do want to uh, add that, I will bring the mirror tool back again and, you know, again, add the details that I need to. So, so thanks again for watching my tutorial, guys. Hope you guys learned something. I'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks.